And finally, let me try to bring this to a close. But I can't close this out without talking about the king of pop. About to blow oh, your mind. But what, what my studies on this man has done is really summed everything that I've been preaching for the last 10 years up in the one person. On the surface, people cried and wept and mourned. Churches celebrated and wore a glove and sung. They sung his songs. And they didn't know that they were celebrating the most powerful Nephilim our music industry has ever seen. This ancient God that was in this man literally stole your heart. With some music. When he transformed himself into a woman, he didn't care. He stole When child molestation charges were brought up against him, you knew they were false. <laughs> he stole your heart. When he bought the Beatles anthology so he could channel Alistair Crawley through it, he stole your heart. When he practiced witchcraft and became one of the most powerful channelers that we've ever seen, ever. Because when I look at Michael Jackson, I see artists that sell a few thousand, maybe even a million albums. And these guys destroy themselves. These guys sell themselves. These guys channel spirits, pray to Alistair Crowley, all of that. And I looked at him and I said, if they do all of that for a million records, what does it take to become the king of pop. The king of the devil's music. I'm going to show you. First thing Alistair Crowley teaches you in the 777 is to channel a powerful entity. Most of the time you get it out of a child. We'll talk about that later. But when this entity comes up, <coughs> what he did, he went and found the worshipers of Sibyl, or we would say Sibel. Sibel was an ancient goddess. So those men that worshiped Sibel were different. They were called Corybants. Now you've heard the term, man, you're acting like a Corybant, or you're acting Corybantis, which means wildly. But the group of men that cloned this phrase were worshipers of this goddess, Sibyl, Sibel. And let me describe these to you. Now, these are some notes from any old encyclopedia. Corybantes, they had their hair dressed and waved like women. They were heavily made up with their faces resembling whitewashed walls. They were castrated and keepers of children and infants, partaking in coming of age rituals and celebrations. They practiced magic and divination to make money. Listen to this. They made wild cries or high pitched shrills while they performed their dances to the music of pipes and dull beats of the tamarind. Listen, when the deity or the gods would enter into them, they were possessed by divine power, they would dance uncontrollably in ecstatic frenzy. Here are some pictures just so you can get a good look. And I'm not, listen y'all, please be serious with me. This is not funny at all. This man died in this, okay? This is not funny. But he literally got put on out magazines, but just as like Michael, <laughs> the archangel, I mean, the Bible Better says up, man. Man, God's image and his likeness. So our, our look is not far from God's look, but right here, they've got Michael and trying to make you think this is like Michael, the archangel, some seductive looking angel because he kept his face in an ambiguous 
fashion where he really was genderless. Corey Bonds. Let's go through some of his songs so you can kind of hear his signals because they always have to signal you. We are the world. There's a line in We Are the World that is so demonic it's hard to believe that folks sung this in their churches in celebration to Michael Jackson. And it's down here. Michael wrote this part. It says, send them your heart so they'll know that someone cares. Y'all know, man, your lives will be stronger and free. Y'all remember that? Then he says, as God has shown us by turning stones to bread. If Jesus had obeyed Satan and turned stones to bread, all of us would be lost right now. 